so excited today because we have an opportunity to celebrate good things. God always does great things in our life, and so we have an opportunity to celebrate today. So Grace, come on up here. Grace, if you've noticed, she's, you know, was singing last week. She's playing keys and stuff, doing stuff. I just want you to know, this is Grace Chappelle, and, and she has agreed to come on board with us and be our worship arts director here at Sacramento. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, there's excitement, excitement. And so we want you to not just, just listen to her music and stuff like that because, you know, she's, she's not wanting to say, hey, it's about her, it's about God. You see that in her heart and everything about her. But I want you to connect with her. I want you, if you have musical skills at all, I want you to connect with her. But if you have no musical skills, I still want you to connect with her. And her husband, Ryan, I mean, they're great people. Um, and just kind of connect, just welcome them into the family and just see how she can continue to pour and add flavor and, uh, and just, something into your life. But we're going to take a moment and pray over her because we believe God's positioned her well for this next season of ministry for her life, but also for this life of this church. So if you feel comfortable with it, I don't want to be weird or nothing, but if you feel comfortable, if you just extend a hand out, just extend a hand out here just because we believe that the power of God is on this. So God, we thank you today for grace. We thank you for her heart of worship. We thank you for the way that she connects with you personally and she enables people to be drawn into your presence corporately. God, I pray that you continue to take not only the skills that you've wired her with and the abilities you've given her, but God, expand it to accomplish all of your dreams, your vision, your goals for this season of life and this season of the crossing. And God, I pray that we will just embrace her well. God, I I thank you for her and Ryan. I thank you for just the way I'm getting to know them, the way I value them so much. I pray that you'll just pour them into people's lives and allow them to receive a blessing as well, God. Do what you need to do because you are a faithful God, and all we want to do is honor and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right on. You're amazing. Woo! She's amazing. You just want to connect with her. All right. We are going to dive into the word of God right now. Um, because we believe it has power and it has the uh, opportunity to bring us life, hope, and victory. And so um, what we're doing is we are jumping into a new series right now. And it's a new series that kind of connects with an old series. Um, that old series we started this year with our word for the year. Some of you might remember it, but some of you are already disconnected. Like, oh, you don't expect me to remember something from January, Right. Because we believe God gave us a word and the word was healthy for this year. That we need to be healthy. And we talked about there's four different dynamics that he wanted us to be healthy. And we talked about being healthy spiritually. And we're like, of course, we're at church. We get that. But sometimes we don't understand what a healthy spirituality looks like. Because sometimes what we've been taught or what we're um, continuing to see that's pushed out there is not a healthy spirituality. He wants to be healthy spiritually. But he also wants to be healthy physically. Um, and some of you are like, oh, great. Now he went there. I'm not trying to shame you. All right? There's no shame but God gave us the body that he gave us. And he says, I want you to maximize the gifts that I've given you. And so we are striving to be just a little bit, take another step forward in physical health this year. And we talked about that. Um, we also talked about being healthy relationally. God put us in relationships with people. I don't care if you're an introvert. You're meant to do life with other people. And so we have to have healthy relationships. And finally, he says, you know what? I want you to be healthy mentally. Mental health is a very serious reality. Um, and, and so we need to make sure that we get the stuff wired between our ears because a lot of times the enemy wins the battle before we have ever, start to, ever start to fight it because it's between our ears we've lost. And so we need to be healthy mentally. So that was all back there in January. We're not going to hit that stuff again. If you say, hey, I want to check some of that stuff out, you can go to our website, all right? Shameless plug for our website. Check out and see what's uh, going on there. But we, we felt we needed to renew this because sometimes you need a reminder, right? It's good to say something one time. I wish that people could say stuff to me one time and I'd get it. I don't get it. 
And so I need a reminder. And so we're like, hey, as we move into the fall, we're going to have a remaining healthy because we believe that God is doing something good in our life, good in, doing something good in our church. But we want to remain in that space and remain healthy because once again, this was our primary verse. And I just want us to understand that it says, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All of it. His power is leading us into. We need to know that through his, the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of the sinful desires. There is a sin that has corrupted a healthy environment, a healthy us that he created us to live in. And whether we want to believe that we've been corrupted by that or not, we have. And we just have to acknowledge it and say, hey, God, how am I supposed to fix it? And he says, you know, really, I'm not expecting you just to fix it. I'm expecting my divine power to be leveraged so that I can lead you into what I've created you for. And so we've got to trust him to do his work, but we've got to continue to surrender to that work within us. And so that's what it is to be healthy, for him to bring us back into that space he has created us for. And so in remaining healthy, we're gonna talk about some different nuances and different things in life that we need to assimilate, that we need to take a part of and work in so that we can maintain health. And see, the reality is when we talk about God's creation, that God's created each one of us, he created us to be healthy, but God creates with order and rhythms. God creates with order and rhythms. See, some of us don't reflect that because our life is chaos. I don't need a show of hands. You know who you are. And it's really many of us, you know, because it's tough. It's tough. Life leads us into chaos, but God creates with order. And in that order, there are rhythms that he functions in. We don't have to look that far that we see days, we see seasons, we see years, right? That there is a rhythm for all of that. There is a planting season. And, and we're like, wow, this is how God has created his order to work. And in our lives, there are rhythms that we need to learn how to function in. See, there's a circadian and a diurnal rhythm to life. And that's a daily rhythm. That, that we know that there will be daylight and nighttime. That's not something we try to figure out if it's going to happen tomorrow. That's just the rhythm. And some of us were late risers or early risers, but you still have a diurnal rhythm to your life. And you're like, this is how I function. That's just how I'm wired. I'm just alert at this time, and I'm not so alert at this time. And some of you are like, man, I can barely stay awake right now. You better keep speed it up, son. <laughs> and see, so we get in that space, and we're like, wow, that's the rhythm that we have in. And then we have circle lunar. We have monthly rhythms, monthly rhythms. And there are certain things that impact us and like, wow, some days I, I realize I'm just really wired and I'm good for like a few days. And then there's like a few days all the time that I'm just like, I'm a little bit off. I can't figure it out. I can't understand why. Because we have a monthly rhythm and that's just how it's wired. And you're like, I got to fix this in me. No, we got to find the right rhythm. And there's a yearly, a circannual rhythm and a yearly rhythm to life. And we know this because we go through these things called birthdays. We love them when we're young. We hate them when we're older, you know? And so it's like, woo, everyone celebrate my birthday. And then you're like, oh, no, no, can we not have those anymore? But we realize that there's just another rhythm that he's leading me into something new and a new opportunity. And we go through this and God has created us with order and rhythms, but I want us to think, how can I have healthy rhythms in my life? How do I have healthy rhythms in my life? And I want to talk about a couple specific rhythms today that really help us in this journey. But it says this in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. For everything, understand that right there. That's everything. That's not some things. That's not some of the things that I want to understand. Everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. If you read the, re well, the remaining, you know, eight or nine verses right after that, you see that there's some stuff you're like, oh, I don't like those things at all. 
And we don't get to pick and choose and say, those things are no good. Don't have that. He says, for everything, there is a season. Even the bad stuff, but there is a season. And we need to understand how to have a healthy rhythm for the stuff in our life. How am I perceiving it? How am I dealing with it? Because he's created us with this order and with these rhythms. And so the first thing that I want to launch into, and it can be kind of a challenging, sensitive topic, but we need to find rhythm with our emotions. Some of you are very emotional beings. You live life based on how you feel about it, how you're perceiving it. And I want to encourage you today because some of you are like, oh, you know, you're elbowing someone and say, see, now he's talking to you right now. I'm here to tell you, God created you with those emotions. He created you with those emotions and I'm not telling you that those are bad. In fact, those of us, because I'm one of them, we are non-feelers or whatever, and, and, and so we sit there and go, oh, I got to take control of my emotions. I got to make sure that, you know, and like, let's push those aside. And I want to tell each one of us that are non-feelers more of the, we call it the thinking because we think that elevates us more a little bit, that God created each one of us with emotions too. And for us, ignoring it is unhealthy. For us, pushing it down is not what he's wired us for. That we all have been created with emotions. If God created emotions in us, they're not the enemy. How we deal with it may be the enemy, but their emotions are not the enemy. And see, we need to understand that we need to find rhythm in our emotions. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4, just a few verses later, it says, There is a time to weep. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm too tough for that. i got to prove myself. You're unhealthy. I'm just telling you, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. If you can't get either one of those ever in your life, that's unhealthy. And there is a time to mourn and a time to dance. So I'm here to tell you right now is the time to dance. Get up and start moving. No, I'm just joking. Some of you, like, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sound guy's ready back there. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh no, what did this just turn into? <laughs> did I walk into the wrong place this morning? I mean, it's a time to dance. Get up, get the disco ball rolling. No, but it's a time. And see, I'm that guy, I'll just be honest, I'm that guy that I never left junior high school dance. You know what I'm saying? I stand at the edge of the corner, I'm just like... That's not happening. Good for you. You know, and that's just where it is. I'm like, oh, no, shake it. Like, no, no, that's not, that's not going to happen. And some of you are with me on that, but there is a time to mourn and a time to dance. Some of you are going through heartache right now. And to not experience that, not to feel it, not to grieve that is unhealthy in your life, and sometimes we just need to let it out. There's these times that I just need to weep, and you're like, that makes me weak. No, it doesn't. It makes you healthy. It makes you healthy. See, there are these times that we go through, invariably because life is hard, we're going to have difficulties, and we need to allow God to meet us in that grief to meet us in that weeping, to meet us in that difficulty. And so we feel it and say, okay, God, I don't know what's going on. I'm not much of this, but here it is. And he says, all right, I can find you there. In the same way, we got to find him in the joy. Sometimes we shut him out when the joy is good. We're like, woo, life is awesome. I don't need you, God, because I got it dialed in. And he said, no, you got to find me here because it will turn one way or the other. And you're going to find seasons where you still find me. It says in Psalm 30 verse 5, it says, Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. That tarry is not a common word, but it talks about that delay. Weeping might delay. And it's like, man, it's been delaying for so long. I don't want you to get bogged down going, well, it was last night. I shouldn't be weeping right now. Scripturally says in the morning I'm supposed to be happy. Some of you are like, I'm never happy in the morning. So that scripture is wrong. But see, here's the thing that we need to understand is that it's holding on, but we need to understand that it is day and night. He's saying there is a rhythm. 
And the rhythm tells me that there will be a time that that needs to be done. But some of us, we get so accustomed to certain things, certain emotions. And we're like, I like that emotion so much. I know how to navigate that. I know how to deal with it. I'm just going to stay here. And he says, you're not supposed to stay there. You're supposed to find the right rhythm. The weeping is good for the moment. But you got to be ready to wake up in the next rhythm of life into the joy that I have for you. Into the joy. See, in James 4 verse 9, see, we like it when it talks about the weeping is going to change into the, the, the joy and all this. But it says in James 4 9, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. How many of you are going to go and memorize that one? Okay, that's one I'm going to put to memory right there. Yeah, I love that verse. No, some verses you're like, this makes no sense. This is stupid. Why is James saying that? Because there's a time that sometimes we get locked into just serving pleasure. And as long as I can stay happy, then that becomes our God. And God says, you're not wired to just be happy all the time. You're wired to have all the emotions. And we've said it many times. We'll say it again. And you might say, this is why I'm going to choose to go find the other church down the road. God did not, he, he didn't create you and want you. His whole goal is for not for you to be happy. His goal is for you to be healthy and to be holy. There's a difference there. Healthy and holy means that I can understand the rhythms of life. I can understand the differences. And so he says, hey, here's the thing. You know, you might find yourself in this space right now where you are feeling this pleasure and stuff. All of us need to acknowledge at some point that we are broken, we are corrupt, and we are in need of a savior. And there is a weeping of our soul that goes along with that. Might not be tears here, but it's a brokenness that goes, oh, I have really fallen short of God's glory. I've fallen short of what God has wired me for, what he's created me for. And because of that, my soul mourns. I try to make myself out to be happy and good all the time, but really, I need to turn into that mourning self and say, God, I'm broken and corrupt. What can you do with me? And he says, thank you for showing up. Thanks for being in that space, and now I'm going to recreate what I intended you for. But we've got to experience the rhythms of the emotions. See, experiencing different emotions is right. I want to encourage each one of us today. Experiencing the different emotions is what God has wired us for. But don't let them get stuck. Either way. See, too often we get stuck in our emotions. And we're like, this is where I always am. And we've identified ourselves. I mean, Jeremiah it says, was the weeping prophet. But still, there's some statements of tremendous hope and victory within him. He still believed that there was something down the road. He goes, man, I've been created for a lot. A lot of rhythm of my journey is pain and difficulty. But I'm waiting for the morning. I'm waiting for the joy that comes. See, we need to find ourselves in this, not get stuck, say, okay, God, meet me here, but I'm looking for here. And maybe we're here. Thank you, God, for all of your grace, your favor, your goodness, but I'm not afraid for things to turn because my God's still going to be the same, whether I'm experiencing good things or whether I'm not. My God is always the same and he's always faithful. Emotions don't determine my relationship with God, but they can help us in that journey. But some of us, we're just not that emotional. We're like, okay, can we just move past that? Yes. We're going to move into rhythm in our activities. We're all asked to do something. We're all wired to do something, but we have to have rhythm with what we do. See, there's this story that happens in Luke 10. Now, Jesus had friends. That's crazy to think about, but Jesus was a human. He had friends. He just hung out with people at different times. And there were these two sisters that he was hanging out with one time. It's called Mary and Martha. And you can read the whole story in Luke 10. And so Jesus is coming over. And if Jesus is coming over to your house, some of you are already, you know, if I said Jesus is coming over for lunch today, you'd be like, oh, I'm leaving right now because I got to get things ready. Some of you are already panicked. I'm like, oh, okay, he's already here. Calm down. 
You're like, I, I, gotta, I gotta settle all this. Thing. I gotta organize everything. I gotta get out the right china and make sure it's all clean and stuff. And so this is Martha. And so Martha's there preparing the best luncheon possible for Jesus. Why? Because she wants to do the best for Jesus. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. It's not wrong. It's the way she wanted to honor and bring glory to the, the Savior that she knew and loved. But in the midst of this, we tend to feel like everyone's got to do our stuff. And so it says this in Luke 10, 40 and 41. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Because Mary was just sitting there with Jesus hanging out. Some of you are like, I got a sister like that. Dude. I'm sitting here, I'm making a good spread, and she's just chilling, yucking it up. I'm sure they're laughing. Ha, 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 ha. That was a good one, Jesus. And Martha's like, what? Am I the only one doing this around here? What is happening? And so she's like, tell her to help me. Sounds right. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion for which will not be taken away from her. Good portion. I like the way the ESV puts that in there. It's a good portion. Why? Because it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. It's this portion. He's saying, you know what? You're not doing the wrong thing, but right now you need a little bit more of my presence rather than this activity that you're doing. And so he says, that's okay, because he never turned away from people that did stuff. In fact, it was crazy when he walks into Peter's house, you know, and the mother-in-law just goes to serve. Well, that's kind of crazy. She's like, hey, that's just expected. I mean, someone's got to do the job. When someone didn't do the job, Jesus got up and did the job. The job had to get done. But he's saying, are you finding the right rhythm for your activities? You're serving and you're doing good, but you also need some space for the presence some space to just acknowledge who he is. See, there's another story I just want to hit. And I just encourage you to read some of these stories. Luke 10, Mark 4. It says this, that Jesus was then going out and he's ministering. He's sharing the gospel. See, Jesus was a very active guy. He, he had people to set free. He had lives to transform. He's like, let's get it done because I got three years to do it all. And he went after it. And so at one time, he's preaching to a whole bunch of people. He pushed off, and he's in this boat, and he's still preaching to people because the crowd is so big. And finally, he's done with his message. He's like, okay, it's time for us to go to the other side of the lake. And so he tells his disciples, three of which were, sh were fishermen. So they knew boats. They knew how to get to the other side of the lake. He's like, I'm doing my job. You do your job. And so he says, get us to the other side of the lake. In fact, this is what it says here. Leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. The other boats were with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing they're freaking out now I'm thinking Matthew's a tax collector of course he's freaking out because he doesn't know anything about boats but they'd hand him an oar and say, you're going to have to row us to the other side. The fishermen knew, they knew storms, they knew navigation, they knew how to make it where they needed to go. Jesus, here's the crazy thing. See, he's asleep. It's not that he's oblivious to what's going on. He trusts the people that he was pushing them out. He says, hey, let's get to the other side. Where we're going is not going to change. I know where we're going. And he says, when we get there, I've got a job to do. So give me some peace. And they freaked out. Why? Because all they saw was their activity. All they saw was their job and their role. And they realized, wait a second, all I'm doing is doing. And see, there's a rhythm to our activity. If all we're doing is doing, even if it's the good stuff, You've lost the rhythm. You've lost the rhythm that God has for your life. He says, do, do the stuff. Jesus, he didn't say, okay, we're all just gonna sit back and take a nap and somehow we're gonna end up on the other side of the boat, on the lake. He said, no, some of you gotta do your work. 
but don't let the work become too much. See, he ends that passage, and he says, he gets up, he takes care of all the issues, and I'm thinking he's going back to sleep, but he says to them, he says, hey, why do you have no faith? And they're like, dude, we're serving you, bro. And he says, but you weren't demonstrating. You were just caught up in your activity. Here's the thing. Don't get so caught up in being faithful that it affects your faith. Some of you are way too active in your life. And you're like, but I'm active in good stuff. I'm patting myself on the back. You see all the ways that I'm serving? The community is giving me awards for being so good. And meanwhile, you're so burnt out. And you're so spiritually dry. And you're going to Jesus all the time. See, in both of those stories, it's crazy that people approach Jesus and they scream at him. Don't you care? And he's like, what? Don't forget who created you. Don't forget who called you. Don't forget who's with you. Because in both situations, he was right there. See, in the midst of this, God never leaves us alone. But we just got to find the right rhythm. And sometimes we've lost sight of him. He's never lost sight of us. And say, oh, thank you for letting me serve your kingdom. Thank you for letting me do your calling and your commissioning in my life. But let me still stay in step with where you are, Jesus. Let me stay in step. Because ultimately, all of this leads us to the last rhythm that I really want to bring it home with. We need to find rhythm in our worship. Too often, worship has just become music. When worship, according to the word of God, is life. It is our emotions, our activity. It's everything and then some. Everything that you're going to do this week can be an act of worship. Or it can just be stuff. Are we finding the right rhythm of the worship? And you're like, well, well, well I know worship, and, and it's just I need to get wrapped up in it. You're a feeler. That's okay. You need to find your space in some of the, the thinking worship and active worship. Some of you are like, well, I'm just trying to do all these things and everything. No, you need to settle yourself and find yourself in some of the, the feeling worship and the presence worship because it takes all the above. And this week, you need to exercise all of the above if you're gonna find the right rhythm for worship. See, it's not how you worship. I mean, this is what, not what we worship, but how is the rhythm. What we worship remains the same. It says in Matthew 4, 10. It's very clear. When Jesus is being tempted, he's being torn apart and all this kind of stuff, you know, trying to be misguided and redirected away from the heavenly father. He says in the midst of that, when the world is trying to confuse him and cause confliction for him, just like it's trying to do for us, it says, you shall worship the Lord your God and only him shall you serve. That's the deal. It's only one. The worship is only one area, but the problem is we worship so many other things in life. And so he says, hey, don't find the rhythm in what you worship, but find it in how. It's all about God. And how do we find rhythm in how we worship? In John 4, 24, as Jesus is talking to a person that doesn't quite know yet, she's exploring faith. Why? Because Jesus was stirring her up. And she's trying to say, well, here's all of these things that I'm supposed to know. And Jesus corrects her and he says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What he's saying is here, there's a sense of a, a, a feeling, of emotion, this sense of connection that we have because he's created us with a spirit to connect with his Holy Spirit. And when we do that, we're like, whoa, something's there. But if that's all that we do in our worships, what happens when we've lost that? Then we think we've lost God. And we're like, where did God go? And God's like, I'm right here. I'm still sleeping on the cushion. You got caught up in your activity and you lost me. He says, hey, it's both. It's spirit and in truth. It's emotion and activity. It's honoring him in everything that we do, but allowing him to be present in all of it. And see, this is what we need to understand and to find that rhythm. And so it says in 1 Corinthians, as they're wrestling through different abilities and, and, and kind of worship styles and all these things, in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, you know, Paul writes, he says, so what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. 
He says, I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing praise with my mind also. He says, I need to engage the brain and the heart in all of my acts of worship. When it comes to the songs, I love how Grace just wraps herself into it. I mean, I, I can just watch that and be like, that just, in, that grips my soul. That She's not performing for us. She's just experiencing a God in, a new, in, in the way that God's created her to do this. But it draws us in. And I celebrate that. And so we can sit there and say, okay, I want that. But I also have to know him in my mind. Because when I don't feel him, I got to know he's there. When I don't sense it, and so I'm just encouraging, if you're a feeler, let's worship God a little bit more in that rhythm of thinking this week. If we're thinkers, let's worship him a little bit more in that sense of feeling. And you're like, oh, that's weird. Well, it's time to dance. Get up. Get up and let yourself go. It's not about you anyway. It's about God. And when we experience that full rhythm, we're like, wow, now he's got full control and he's using me effectively. See, whatever you do, find the rhythm to praise the Lord. Find the rhythm to praise the Lord in everything. When you go to work, you're like, oh, it's work, trust me. Let's honor him and celebrate him. Let's worship him in the way that we work this week. Let's worship him in the way that we interact with people at our schools. I see young people in here. In the way that we go to school, I'm worshiping him by my, the way I carry myself and the way I interact with people. Why? Because it's thinking. It's like, oh, I didn't stop and have to sing in honor. No. But there are times I need to do that as well. Some of us shut it down this week. Finding solace in your car. We all got car time probably. Instead of just putting on the stuff you always listen to, put on some stuff and you're like, oh, I'm not into that feely music. Put some on this week and see what God speaks to you, how he stirs your heart. Whatever you do, it says in Colossians 3, whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In all of this, we need to be thankful. There is a season for everything under heaven. In every season, God deserves thankfulness. When we lose thankfulness, that's where it starts to hijack our lives, our emotions and our activity. Thankful. Praise you, God. I praise you in my activity. I praise you with my heart. God, you deserve all the glory. Let's pray together. God, thank you today. Almighty God, that you are faithful, that you are worthy. Thank you, God, that you're present. Even for those that are in this room right now or listening online and they're like, man, I'm going through a season and I can't sense anything. I want to shout out, do you not care? And so, God, I just pray you respond right to them right now and say, yes, I care and I'm right here with you. God, help our Help our worship to go beyond just what we sense and feel into the way that we act and behave and live. God, for those that are thinkers, non-feelers, help us to stretch ourselves this week and say, okay, God, you created with me with emotions. Instead of me being afraid of my emotions, help me to realize and to sense your presence in them. And help me find a good rhythm. God, ultimately we thank you that you give us order and structure. God, help us to find the right rhythm. God, I pray for those today that have not chosen to surrender themselves completely to you. God, I pray that today they'll say, today is my day. Jesus. I'm kind of a little nervous right now. I don't know what this means, but I'm choosing today to give myself completely to you. Take my heart, take my mind, take my body, take my future. Lead it, direct it. I acknowledge today 
that you have created me, recreate in me what you need to so that I can accomplish your plans and your purposes for my life. Forgive me of my dysfunction, my sin, my unhealthiness. And let me walk in victory. I love you, Jesus. You alone are worthy of everything. And so I surrender to you today, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen.